Good morning, Clarence Farrington Elementary. Happy Thursday, March 9th, 2023. Today is National Barbie Day, National Meatball Day, and my favorite National Popcorn Lover's Day. Speaking of popcorn, I heard it through the grapevine that we will have a Popcorn Friday this very Friday. So, if you're buying popcorn, make sure you're here on time on Friday. We have two special birthdays in the building today. The first is our very own Miss Teresa. The second is sweet little Brian in Mrs. Thompson's pre-K class. Little Women's History Month fact for you. An education task force in Sonoma County, California kicked off Women's History Week in 1978 on March 8th, International Women's Day. They wanted to draw attention to the fact that women's history wasn't really included in K through 12 school curriculums at the time. Women Organizations, including the National Women's History Alliance, campaigned every year to recognize Women's History Week. In 1980, President Jimmy Carter declared the week of March 8th Women's History Week across the country. By 1986, 14 states had declared the entire month of March Women's History Month. The following year, in March of 1987, activists were successful. They lobbied Congress to declare March Women's History Month. And for the rest of our announcements, tonight, friends, this evening, the CFE girls basketball team plays at 6 p.m. at Broad Ripple High School. This will be a double header with games at both 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. When, that's right, friends, when they win, their next game will be the championship game on Saturday, March 11th at 10 a.m. back at Broad Ripple High School. I, for one, cannot wait to see them win the championship. Looking ahead, we have no school on Friday, March 24th. That is an optional pit day, and the following week is spring break. Now for our mindful breathing exercise. Hello, my name is Joelle. I'm in Miss Potter's class. Today we'll be, we will be doing elevator breathing. One... Two, three, hello, my name is Joelle, I'm in Miss Potter. This is Margaret Hamilton. Once there was a girl who put a man on the moon. Her name was Margaret, and she was really good with computers. When she was just 24 years old, she joined NASA, the United States agency that explores outer space. She took the job to support her husband and her daughter, little realizing that she would soon lead a scientific revolution that would change the world. Margaret was an engineer and led the team who programmed the code that allowed the Apollo 11 spacecraft to land safely on the moon's surface. Margaret, Margaret would bring her daughter Lauren to work on weekends and evenings. While four-year-old Lauren slept, her mother programmed away. 
creating sequences of code to be added to the Apollo's command module computer. On July 20th, 1969, just minutes before Apollo 11 touched down on the lunar surface, the computer started spitting out error messages. The entire mission was in danger. Luckily, Margaret had set up the computer to focus on the main task and ignore everything else. So instead of aborting the mission, Apollo 11 landed safely on the moon. The Apollo landing was hailed by the world as one small step for man, one giant step for mankind. But it wouldn't have happened at all without the brilliant programming skills and cool-headedness of one, you guessed it, woman, NASA engineer Margaret Hamilton. This is Mar- All right, sweet friends, that is all I have for today. I look forward to seeing all of you again on Friday. That's right, friends, tomorrow is Friday. Make it a great day or not. The choice is yours.